Hello and welcome to another episode in the Knights of the Old Republic playthrough. Last time we were futzing around in this cantina, and this time we're gonna bail out of here because there's nothing to be found in here yet. Hopefully, we finish Tatooine today and move on to the next planet. One that is hopefully not quite as dry as this one. So the next place I need to go here is the Zerka Corp Hunter's Lodge headquarters where they have a fun little person there who will grant me a hunting license so that I can get out of this damn city of Anchorhead. <clears throat> Excuse me. Feeling much better today compared to last one. So we are going to have a fun, super duper time. It's right here, Zerka offices. Now I just got to find the right person. <laughs> And uh, seeing a little bit of a light side, dark side choice to be made forming in the pit of our minds. Is it this guy that I need to talk to? I can't remember. Nope. Need to talk to this chick. Yeah, Wait, Candrus, you're in the way. You're this lady right here. Can I help you? These are the offices of the Zerka Corporation. I trust you have business with the company. If this is about employment, I'm afraid all regular mining positions are full. And before you ask, we are also no longer selling hunting licenses. As I said, we are no longer selling them. There are too many people cavorting about outside the walls as it is. We use them to ensure that only people judged fit by Zerka Corporation are allowed outside the city. We don't allow casual exploration because of legal concerns. Zerka Corporation takes no responsibility for loss of life on the dunes. It's just so we can keep track of people. No one leaves the city without a Zerka hunting license. Well, normally we charge 200 credits, but I could make an exception if you agreed to perform a task for us. It's similar to hunting. The sand people are becoming a problem. They destroy our sand crawlers and kill our miners. One particular tribe is the worst. It's as if their chieftain has decided to wage war against us. I would like their attacks terminated. Bring me their gaffy sticks as proof. If you agree to do this, I'll give you a hunting license now and pay a bounty for each stick later. I'll give a bonus for the chieftains. Then you are free to leave the city just like everyone else. Zerka Corporation will welcome your eventual change of mind. Please, feel free to enjoy the door behind you. What a bitch! Okay, I'll... I'll do just that.
And as I was talking to that guy, I realized that I didn't actually get the Zerka hunting license, so we need to turn around and go back and talk to that nasty, nasty lady once more. Greetings again from the... Of course, but you're... Certainly. Please pose your questions to the representative kiosk on Coruscant. Business hours, please. Very well, though I do have work to get back to. As I said, we are no longer selling them. There are too many people cavorting about outside the walls as it is. We d it's The sand people are it's if you Excellent. Now, just so we understand each other, this is an enforceable contract. Zerka Corporation takes this very seriously. Here is your license, and a few directions. We believe one of their enclaves is in the far south of the Dune Sea. You might try following one of our sand crawlers. They're regularly attacked. I wouldn't mind you escorting them. Very good. Zerka Corporation looks forward to your future business. That marks the signal that we have our hunting license and we can officially leave Anchorhead whenever we want to. Um, so that's probably the next thing I'm going to do. The the conflict here is about the Sand People and how they're attacking Zerka Corporation in entities. And the Zerka wants you to go murder them all to stop this. But since you're light side, you don't really want to go murder a bunch of, quote, innocent Sand People. Um, so you want to go talk to them. But unfortunately, nobody knows how to talk to them except for this handy dandy droid back that I already got, HK-47. So what I need to do before leaving this place is pick up HK-47 and then leave. Um, I'm transiting back for healing, transit out, and then, uh, then we'll pick up HK-47 in terms of party selection. Who do I want as my second? Yeah, probably just Bastila. Okay, cool, and we'll have to do a bunch of levels because he's a brand new party member. Since he's a droid, he get he's like a combat droid, so he does have a fair amount of skills, but um, <clears throat> uh, really he's just good for blaster weapons, fire, blaster rifle stuff, um, and you can get the droid gearhead stuff. He's not particularly good at fighting unless you super mega ultra upgrade him with the repair skill, but I don't really plan to do that. Too much work, honestly, and there are, there are Jedi in your party. And when there's Jedi in your party, you can just use them instead of some dumb droid thing. Some droidica. Hmm, Feats. He uh, already has blaster rifle specialization, and he gets some weird droid-specific thing. And I guess I could give him toughness, but that's like the last feat you give if you just have nothing else. Um... Hmm, power shot would be okay. Hmm, yeah. Okay. We get more levels up, though, and skills recommended. I don't really care. Balance skills is good, and poof! We're all set. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Statement. I cannot be of assistance on that, Master. Whoops, didn't mean to click on HK there. Going to just move on out of this place. Um, now there's a couple of things that I need to do before I actually do the sand people, and mostly it's just prep work. And there's another side quest over here that I'll end up doing as well. But that's very fun. All in good time, though. Gonna make our way out to this guy, who's just simply blocking the path. And with our new hunter's license, everything should be just peachy. No one peachy. leaves Anchorhead without proper authorization. Well, let's see it. Come on. All right. I'll just scan that and you're off. I'll keep it on file, too. Good luck out there. You'll need it. Hello there. You're heading out into the desert? You're a hunter, right? You must be if you've been allowed to leave Anchorhead. When you see Tannis, and I know you old boys always stick together, tell him his wife hopes he enjoys the anniversary gift. You're just another of his buddies from that hunting club. I know your kind. You all cover for each other, I bet. Well, he can do what he wants. He'll get what he deserves. 
I bought my own license just so I could see that he did. I'm sure you do. Like I said, when you see him, tell him his wife Marlena says hello. And that lady is a side quest where we can see those little four dots and then another dot over there. We're going to head right to that guy and perform the diagnostics on his poor little droids that need to be done. Um, now this sand place is pretty much, you can walk almost as far as you can see. There's a nice sky box with two suns going on. Ah, I miss old graphics sometimes. We'll say it before Anyone I head up this place. Because it's I possible to, to mess be, this up. Uh, Doomed. Hey there, thanks for stopping. I appreciate it. I've been stuck without water for hours. Wasn't looking good. I don't remember you from Faz's club. You new to Anchorhead? Could you maybe help me get out of here? Well, uh, it would appear that I've worn out my welcome with my wife Marlena. She fixes my droids. <laughs> Fixed them good this time. Commentary. One would hope the female is better at repairs than Yukalaka. I still would like to crush his neck, Master. I triggered some sort of trap she programmed. She probably figured I wouldn't be smart enough to get out. There she was right. The wife put a kink in my battle droids. They're in some sort of discharge loop. And if I move from this spot, they're threatening to blow up. She knew I wouldn't know how to fix them. Could you try to do some repairs? They don't care if you move. It's just me who's stuck. I say leave him. You're pretty heartless for such a pretty lady, you know. I take it back. Let's congratulate his wife. Commentary. I say we blast the meat bag and save you the trouble, Master. What's with all the droids lately? My wife get to you too? Negative. I just don't like organic meat bags. Except for the Master, of course. Uh, I'd, uh, really appreciate a bit of help. Please? Just access each droid's repair interface. You'll have to do some tinkering, but be careful. One explosion, I can survive. Any more than one, and I'm dead. Oh, and uh, ignore the message Marlena left in there. No way do I deserve this, I swear. Now we have to solve the issues with his four droids, and these are all math-based or logic-based puzzles. Uh, let's look at this first one. Um, oh, so this solution is really strange. It took me so long to figure this out, but... The numbers in the sequence are describing the previous numbers in the sequence. So it starts with four, and so the next one was, uh, it's one four in the sequence. It means that there was literally one four in the previous sequence. And so on and so forth. Uh, you can look at that later. But man, god, that was stupid. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Status and repair, manual, diagnostics, there it is. Uh, this is some, this is pretty simple logic question. Uh, I think that it's no two that's reporting false, or accurately, the other way around. Cool. Next droid. Uh, status manual. Uh, this is a sequence of prime numbers, and the missing value is seven, I think. Yep, that looks right. <clears throat> Boom. Next one. Boom, boom, boom. This one, I think, is the division puzzle. Where you, it's like a word problem. Yep. So, 100 divided by 300 over 180, and that would be 120, I think. Beep! Cool! Awesome! And we've solved this guy's dumb droid problem that he stood here and almost died because of. Congratulations, man. That was unpleasant. Thanks for your help. I'd have been a goner. Hey, and the old bat thought I was dead. <laughs> you never asked me for anything, but I consider my life worth something. Please, take this. I insist. Thanks again. I doubt any of those uptight hunters would have helped, and I doubt the wife is coming back. I'm heading back to the shop. I hope she left the manuals for these things behind. Ungrateful little. Okay, <sighs> lovely. Side quest completed. Side quests on these alternate planets are usually really simple like that. Uh, now I can do one of two things. I can go to the base of that sand crawler and help out friendly Zerka employees, which I don't think I'll do yet. But we'll run directly past it to that sort of camp-looking thing to the left of it. I'm kind of going in between it. Um, 
Yeah, let's do that. Just for extra looting privileges. I think you get ambushed as soon as you walk up here, but not to worry. We have Basila and HK-47 to prevent such a, a thing from killing us. Don't let me die under here, please! Anyone! Please help! I can't get out! Three, two, one. I'm a trap! And we have been ambushed. What? Not to worry. Yeah. Although, actually, my character is almost dead. Sure. It's okay. Stasis. Hopefully, you can get some uh, shots off on this bad boy here before he dies. Basilo uh, doing some nice healing. Ooh, it's going to be close. One volley. Just one volley is all I need, man. Come on, Basilo. All right. I think that's... I mean, he didn't do as much damage as I'd hoped, but maybe he'll miss. Oh, thank goodness. That's what I like to call high defense value right there. Good, good. Sassus, please. Sassus, please. Yeah. Gamorians typically have horrible will save. And thank goodness for that, because I may have died there. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Let's loot their bodies. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh yeah, she already has Eradiate Strength, which is plus two instead of plus one. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. The Dark Jedi robe gives just a slightly better value, even though it is technically Sith. Um, and I, I sold all the droid parts I had at Yavin. So unfortunately, uh, HK-47 is completely naked out in the Dune Sea here. But we had no real problem with that engagement, so I'm not really that worried. Good. Increased computer use. Good work, HK-47. Okay, so what we need to do is get ambushed by sand people. And then once that happens, we can loot their bodies for sand people attire. And then we can sneak into the sand people base. That's how it works, man. And yeah, sand people just come randomly. They come at a maximum of three times. Oh, and also I'll do the... Uh, there's like a engagement where... Sand people attack a Zerka ship, and you get a bunch of experience if you kill all of them, because there's a total buttload. Now, most sand people, if you get close to them, they will pull out a gaffy stick and start murdering you with it. I think that I'm strong enough at this point where if somebody goes into melee form, they'll miss most of their attacks, or at least 50%, which is you know pretty good. Uh, so there are sand people attired there, and Bantha fodder, which is going to be useful later on. When we need to kill a crate dragon, but I don't want to shed some spoiler light too soon. Um, so let's do that uh, Zerka engagement right now. <clears throat> and we'll kill probably about 50, 50, 60 different. Nah, it's not that many. It's like 20, though, at least. Dozens of them attacked. Sand Who people. Ah, it doesn't matter. Can you handle a blaster? It may attack again at any second. I doubt we could hold out on our own against another wave of them. You would be right came out of nowhere. Wait, damn it. Here they come again. How did they do that? And Scotty tried to warn us, but alas, it was too late. Sand people are coming from the front and the back, circulating, waiting to attack. I think I tried to say that one on Dantooine, but it was just a complete failure. <laughs> uh, so this, this can get difficult because you can't use grenades since they are running and grenades have a tendency to miss moving targets. But if we spam Basil's heal over and over and over again, we will be full health. Although she's out of mana, so this could be a little difficult if I use um, uh, force speed here. It might help me out because it will give me an extra attack per round. Try and land that young sneak attack and oh, I aggroed literally every one of them on me. That's okay. Stasis is pretty strong at this point. <clears throat> and uh... I don't have full light side, you know, like, if you get a full light side or full dark side points, you get bonuses. Um, 
to that side of the force's powers. For example, uh, if you have full light side, then uh, force powers from the light side don't cost as much mana, so you can basically stash this infinitely forever. It's like super duper awesome. And then eventually I need to go for the circlet of Seresh, which gives plus five wisdom. Holy crap. That is on Kashik, and that's the next place we'll be going. And since it makes sense to go there second in the story, we're going there second in the story. I could have gone there first to get it, which would have been so good. But for the sake of the viewer, I just want you to know. Also, I almost died there, but really I didn't. I know exactly what I was doing. <laughs> you gotta trust me, man. You gotta trust me, Mr. Thanks Player. for your help. I don't think we'll try holding this position for much longer. We're not soldiers. Did the company send you? It's about time they drove these animals out. Well, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. Do you know about their enclave in the south? Don't even try to go near it. They've taken all the Zerka weapons that were supposed to protect our sand crawlers. That place is a fortress, a death trap. You'll have to find some way to sneak into the place. That is not my job. Yeah, so do we. There's no way we're repairing this thing or getting attacked. Ah, that Jarvis will salvage it eventually anyway. Then. <clears throat> so that wasn't too shabby. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need to heal up, and since the force power doesn't heal droids, you have to use repair kits on droids. Like that. A little light appears around them, and they repair themselves. I don't think I've looted that rubble yet. <clears throat> Haven't. No worries. We still need to get ambushed by the remaining sand peeps. Yeah, I have clothing. I have one. I, I really only need two, but... For the sake of experience, I'll get ambushed three times because that's the maximum number of ambushes that you can, you know, sure. handle. Or that will actually just come out. Uh, those things up there that are actually really hard to kill unless you handle them really carefully. So we're going to avoid them for now. Up oh, here we go, sand people. Flying around. Oh gosh, they appeared right in the middle of them. I don't remember the name of those things. Ugly. Ugly creatures. Um, so these are elite, elite warriors, and they just have higher values of damage and attack. Um, not to worry, Bastila is extremely strong right now and can definitely handle three of them at the same time. Oh gosh, Bastila! Nope, no, no, stay away. <laughs> Turn around. No, HK. Nope. That doesn't mean you should aggro too. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so yeah. KOTOR has that problem where if your character attacks, then sometimes your party doesn't attack, but if your party attacks, sometimes your character doesn't see what's going on, you don't want to aggro things, you really just gotta micromanage the crap out of these guys. Okay. Uh, well, well, I forgot to loot. So we're gonna sneak a sneak a roo up to this guy and hope I don't get killed by those beasts. Desert Raid. Oh, I forgot. Raid! That's why that lady sold me a raid plate earlier. It's not like a World of Warcraft raid plate. Yes. Rune plate from RuneScape, something like that. Yes. Okay. We're gonna run this way, use our Night Force speed. And I think if you just w run around us for a specific amount of time, you'll get ambushed again. <sighs> Some mines over here. I don't really care about mines. They don't sell for that much. Um, over here is the dune, like the eastern dune sea. You can walk this way only if you have a map. So if you like walk back here, it'll be like, you have no idea where you're going. Like that. And you can only get a map from the sand people. What, what do you, what do you know? Should get ambushed pretty soon here. It's been a while since my last one. I guess I could fill out that black part of the mini-map a little bit. Come on, sand people. I'm here. I'm ready to be overtaken. Up oh, there we go. Finally. I don't even need to do this. Just It's just for the extra, like, 150 XP. Because you get, like, 50 XP per kill on these guys. Alright. One is dead, for sure. Still have uh, four speed active, so I get four attacks. Awesome. Nice work. This planet must have been... I don't know, it's... 
Like, if you look at the playable area of Tatooine, it's just a big open land. <laughs> so, and, and that just happens because the narrative says it should be a big open land. It's like the complete opposite of a maze or a labyrinth or something like that. So, it's I think it's meant to be super easy to do this and figure out where to go. Um, but modern game design would dictate that you just should never have something like this because it's it, it brings you out of the scope of the game. Yes. You know, cuz it's like just insanely obvious where you can and can't walk. And you're basically relying on uh a skybox to be your only, um, like what's the word for it? It's like the only prettiness in the horizon. Whereas most most game developers and artists would just die inside if they said that they could only use a skybox to indicate how good an environment should look. <laughs> but you know, this game's pretty old. They probably didn't have the ability to change that, or didn't really care. Both is good. I mean, there's only so much time you can spend lip syncing. Yeah, that reminds me. Horizon Zero Dawn just came out, and I was watching videos of it, and I mentioned this before, I think, but that lip syncing in that game is so much worse than it is in this game. It And it bothers me, for sure. And, like, the lips in this game suck. Like, you can barely tell that they're forming mouths, but at least it, like, syncs up really well with uh, with how they talk. Most of the time it, sure. it does, at least. Um, but in that game, it's not even close. Like, the voice goes first. Usually when you talk, you form the, like, you form the lips to make it, make the sound first, and then you, uh, like, make the sound. But in that game... The sound happens first, and then maybe 500 milliseconds later, the lips form, and sometimes they're not even close. Like, the O mouth comes with the A and the, and the K sound and, and hard consonants. Um, so we walk in here, and uh, HK47 should, like, stop everything, and should be all good. Oh. Well, this isn't supposed to happen. Uh, um, maybe I did this wrong. Uh, you know what? I actually just don't care. Usually what's supposed to happen is that sand person is supposed to, uh, like, stop you and talk to you, but it just aggroed me, so I guess I'll just kill everything in here. Um, okay, whatever. I wasn't going, I wasn't really planning on doing this. <laughs> But I think if you do this properly, we won't get a huge deficit of dark side points. Which should be super good. Okay, yeah. I have no idea what happened there. And honestly, I just don't care. <laughs> I like killing all the sand people anyway. It's a, a nice big canvas of dungeon we can alter. Um, and, and this place has a lot of loot, too. And there's, like, Jawas in here or something. I don't even know if I'll finish that quest. Because I always... I can never find, like, the Jawa master that... He's, like, the guy you go to to complete the quest. But he's... he's, he's it always seemed like he was hidden from me. Just in the back corner. And I just never, ever found time to... Figure out where he was. I prefer not to have HK47 for this because he's basically dead weight at this point. But Bastila is really strong, so she might be able to make up for his horribleness. Oh, you can loot these guys for their gaffy sticks, but if you sell them to Zerka Corporation, you get dark side points, obviously, because that's a dark side part of this. Ooh, excuse me. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, here's the Jabba's. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so I think on the map this place is just a big circle or a big figure eight or something. We're looking for the chieftain guy. And that fight is a little difficult. 
a little peachy, so I might have to cheese it with some grenades and other such bedrudgery. But not yet, not quite yet. We'll know when we hit that room because there's just an ass load of guards sitting inside of it. Um, everywhere else is just a loot box. It's like a, a big giant bank, uh, which I have come to acquire wicker baskets and everything. And if you do sell the Gaffy Sticks to Zerg Corporation, I think they sell for 100 each, which is not too shabby. If I do say so myself. Ugh, oh, man, from the front, my character does garbage damage. That's what happens when you use blaster pistols. They, they do, you know, 2 to 7 damage base. And in this game, you don't really have damage reduction. You just have defense, which decreases the chance to hit. And good armor increases your defense. It, I mean, that's just standard... What's it called? Standard Dungeons and Dragons system. I think this is the room with the chieftain. Chieftain man. Oh gosh, power attack. That thing just looks so scary. And those have no gaffy sticks or weapons, so it should be easy to take down. The Thumales. Okay. Alright. Okay. Sweet. Uh, I want to make sure I'm in the correct spot. Yeah, this looks right to me. Captives. Outside. We go We Gucci. Okay, so in here... Um, I think it's actually in the next room is the uh, chieftain guy. Little meanie pants, as I like to call him. Because <clears throat> he's attacking Zerka Corporation stuff. And we gotta... We gotta bring the Zerka Corporation his big ol' gaffy stick. Although we don't actually have to do that because in here is the maps of the Eastern Dune Sea. So we never actually have to finish that quest. <clears throat> yes. Okay, rubble is in here. Just more crap to loot, honestly. It's irritating beyond belief. Sometimes to loot everything. Although, this game does something that uh, no other games do. It's like when you click to loot something, it actually moves your mouse cursor to the OK button, so you can just spam. You wait for the loot, and then you just spam click left. It's actually really nice if you don't have an auto loot system like most MMOs do. But honestly, the preferable way to do this is to use an auto loot system, simply because uh, it's way easier that way. You just like walk around and just stuff slides into your inventory. Sweet. It's really strange how on, you know, in old games, how they had to limit the resources or like the DPI of the screen to match the DPI of the monitors. For example, oh God, that sounded probably really confusing. But when you loot something in this game, I'll take care of these guys. When you loot something in this game, there's only three icons per scroll that you can see. And that's... In a modern game, there's no way. Like, with a 4K television, why would you only show three icons? Um, when you could show, like, 80 at once, and there'd be no problem with that. But, but old game means you have to have UI that scales appropriately down, so the, you only have a certain number of pixels to work with. Um, but, it, you know, it, it, it seems to work. Okay, so here's the big bad room. Uh, how do I deal with this? Okay. If I get hit by everyone at once, I will most certainly die, because they'll pull out... The Chieftain's Gaffy Stick is capable of uh, one-shotting me, I think. What can I do? So we'll try and get to the back here, sneak attack at least one of them down, and then hopefully Bastila can kill another one, and survive long enough for me to do another stasis attack. And HK is just their tank bullets, that's really. He's not doing any damage. Oh gosh, Bastila's dead. This could get difficult. I have to make sure... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness gracious, okay. Well, two down, and there's, I think, three or four left. Oh, sweet, he didn't aggro me. Alright, this might be easy. Okay, hold on, hold on. We'll sneak in through here. Give me a young stasis. Oh, he, he, he resisted. Come on. One more chance, one more chance. Um, oh, crap. Okay, uh... Uh, let's see if I can cheese him out of this. If he pulls out his gaffy stick, I'll certainly lose. But if he doesn't, then I'll be fine. Concussion grenade for the win. Let's see it. Mm. 
Nope. Okay, so the Chieftain is apparently just has incredibly high will save. We'll just have to do this with our ball of stats and med packs, I think. Because I don't, I don't know if this Concussion Grenade will do anything. If it does, good for me. Nope, it doesn't. Alright. Let's see who has a better ball of stats. He most certainly does at this point, because his, uh, his rifle does more. His pistol, I think, might do more damage than mine. Although, yeah, since he has, hasn't pulled out his gappy stick, we're good. He's gonna do no damage to me. Boop. I don't think he'll use a med pack. That would be way, way too good for a CPU AI enemy. Okay. Oh. All right, still got to deal with the rest of them though. So this this ain't over yet. You got to loot him too. He has like the gaffy stick in the plans for the DNC as well. Sweet. And Durasteel bonding alloy. I don't know what that goes to. Probably armor. All right. Okay. All right. Mhm. Mm we'll save the game here just in case. Just for Justin. Okay. Now we gotta do this one at a time. Hopefully I can get this guy without aggroing everyone else. Oh. <laughs> Nothing hurts more than a missed power shot in two in a row, man. Ugh. Alright, come on. So, so far so good. The other guy in there hasn't seen me or, you know, from a computer's perspective hasn't seen me. So I can take down anyone 1v1 with blasters because I have infinite med packs, essentially. And advanced med packs are really nice. I do also have stasis in case the other guy aggros me. Hopefully that works. I, I should have a pretty high stasis ability. Uh, so that first guy went down. So we got another one here. And then you can see the gaffy stick of another one right behind the right-hand side of that door. So I don't want to step forward any farther than I need to. Because if it gets to a 2v1 situation, I might lose. Especially if he goes into melee form. And I can't do anything about it. So power shot. Come on, friend. Making good use of the visor that I got at uh, the Volker base still. Man, it's been, it feels like it's been so long since I was on Terrace. <laughs> and that, that has been over half the game so far, is just Terrace. Oh, yes. Okay, Sassus is good. Now we can use the multi-wing sneak attack. I don't have enough mana for night speed. So. Awesome. Okay. Easy, easy game. Pulled it out. Now all that's left is to loot the rest of this place and head back. So I guess to expound on a point that I was trying to make earlier, is that this game, uh, especially Tatooine, has that problem where you have sort of arbitrary limits posted in places, or it feels arbitrary at least, that you just can only walk in this area because it's obvious that there's a fence and, and, and it's limited. A lot of people don't like that. They want to see an open world situation where it's simulated and everything goes by itself. And, and modern games are like that a lot. You know, Skyrim was like that. Um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn was like that. Um, GTA V. All these games that are, quote, open world, they promise these vast places and playgrounds that you can just, quote, create your own adventure. Now, that's all fun and great, and to aspire to do something that like that is really cool yes. but the problem with that in my opinion is that they always pr promise these huge you know there's always something to do everywhere you're walking there's something new to discover and people like to emphasize exploration and stuff and yeah exploration is awesome but a lot of the times they have trouble filling up this huge massive areas that they can big they can create and dragon age can inquisition had this huge problem where it would make these massive areas and you spend most of your time walking around them to find collectibles and it's you know sometimes there would be in it uh, an interesting engagement here and there and sometimes you'd find like a cave you'd never been in before but really you're just doing fetch quests and collectibles and that was how they filled up the world to me that's just so not exciting or cool at all that's stupid if you're gonna make a world that big and then be forced to fill it up with collectibles just make the world smaller and make it so I don't have to run as far it, it just draws me out of the action. I mean, it's a game. I don't really want to spend all my time again, walking the around. Absurd. Anyway, we'll talk to this circuit employee and I guess finish his quest. I see that. But do you have the all-important chieftains, Gaffy? That was what you agreed to get for us. Well, that is a very big headache that you've removed. 
I'm sure there are still sand people out there, but they'll be quieter now. I think I'll give you a bonus for this. You've more than lived up to your side of the bargain. Zerka Corporation thanks you. I'm sure. Zerka Corporation thanks you again. Oh, wow. By some miracle, I didn't get any dark side points. And I got money. Wonderful. So it's time to start pumping points into wisdom because I have a decent amount of dexterity for on hit damage right now. I don't really need to worry about that. Wisdom is the highest stat that I can think of that would work. Uh, for force powers, I really want that stasis field. It's so tantalizing, but I can't get it quite yet. So I think I might stick with either heal or force push because it's neutral. Um, Valor is kind of lame because it doesn't last that long. Okay, sweet. Almost done with this episode. Awesome, plus five dexterity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess we'll talk to Basila and okay, then be done with it. Yes, I suppose I can understand your curiosity given the bond that connects us. Very well. I'll tell you a bit about myself. I was found to be strong with the Force at a young age, as most Padawans are. As a girl, I was given to the Order to be trained. When I joined the Order, I left my family on Tal'Raven, as all Padawans do. My family is still there, the last that I heard. I've had little contact with them, as it is discouraged. Relationships with family members are fraught with powerful emotions. Such extremes are to be avoided. Anger and hate are the worst, but even love can lead to folly. Emotional entanglements can be dangerous. They can impair rational thought. They can lead to outbursts of uncontrolled emotion. A Jedi must be above such things. It can be a hard lesson to learn. I was not on good terms with all of my family. But I do remember missing my father terribly for a long time. I was not on good terms with my mother. I was only a little girl when I left, but I was old enough to resent her and the way she treated my father. She pushed my father into treasure hunting. I spent all my young life on ships, traveling from one false lead to the next. She whittled away my father's entire fortune, and I hated her for it. I think she was relieved to give me to the Jedi, but my father was heartbroken. A child is too young to understand the sacrifices that must be made. It's better if they have no contact with their family once they're removed. Once I was older, I realized the wisdom of this policy. A Jedi must do what is needed, personal desires notwithstanding. Love can only obscure and confuse the matter. Even a Jedi cannot always control the feelings of the heart. We must do our best to guard against it, no matter what the cost. But some sacrifices are harder than others. I, I do not wish to discuss this anymore. I would rather return to our mission. <sighs> okay, blah, 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 Basila issues, blah, blah. Sweet. Um, I think that I need to give the rest of my again from the bounties of for the Gaffy Six that I got because apparently well, you don't course, get dark side points for doing this. That's news to me. Sweet. Farewell. <laughs> And cross your fingers. Yep, no dark side points. 800 credits. Easy peasy. That's what I'm talking about. So, actually, I think I had more than eight gaffy sticks. Maybe I just had eight. Oh, well. So, I'm going to head back to the Dune Sea because eventually we'll need to go there, but I will be ending the episode as soon as I get outside of Anchorhead. Who knows? Maybe we'll run into that Java guy that I can never find. Probably not, though. I really thought Tatooine was only going to take one episode, but I was so woefully wrong. I think I just spent too much time futzing around in the, in the hmm? outside of the oh, DNC, and it might have been faster that. if I didn't fight my way through the Sand People territory. Uh, anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll resume this next time and get off this goddamn planet. <laughs> Thanks. See you later.